When building any REST API, one of the first few things that you need to think about is what the resources of your REST API are. REST APIs usually deal with nouns as entities or resources. You have to identify that first in order to establish the contract for your REST API. The resources are the things in your domain. So in the case of a course API, topic is a resource. Once you've identified the resources, you can then look at ways in which the consumers can access the resource using different HTTP methods. This is standard REST. Uh, for the sake of our course API, we're going to be identifying three separate resources. We have the topic, the course, and the lesson. For the scope of this course, the Spring Boot Quick Start course, these three resources should do. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of ways in which you access these resources, either to get it or to update it. Those ways are influenced by what the method you're using for accessing them. So the HTTP method influences what you do with these resources, but the resource itself is are the constants, right? They are the entities or the nouns in your system. So in this unit, we're going to be adding the controllers and the mappings for just this one resource, the topic resource. And like I mentioned before, we're going to be using a hard-coded list of topics. In a subsequent unit, we're going to connect to the database and have this read from actual database tables. But for the sake of this unit, we'll just do a hard-coded list. And we're going to do just the topic. Now, if you just focus on the topic, what are the resource URLs and what are the HTTP methods and the operations that you can perform on a topic resource? Well, these are, again, standard REST conventions. You can have different ways of doing this, but the standard is what's usually recommended. So the standard is to get all the resources, you make a get request to slash topics. So this is the plural which lets you know what the resource is, and this is the root URL for that resource. So the re root URL for courses would be slash courses. Root URL for lessons would be slash lessons. And when you make a GET request to that root URL, you need to design an API to get all the resources for that, for that URL. So we can have things like uh, query parameters, which influence pagination, sorting, and all that stuff but the root URL should be same as the resource name, but plural. Uh, we can also have a GET request to an individual element, which is basically topics slash the ID of the element, and it would get that particular element alone. So let's say you have uh, a topic called spring, and then the ID of that topic is spring, so you can have a GET request to slash topics slash spring, and it's going to get you only the topic related to that particular element. Only that element will be gotten back as a as a response. Now these are the gets. You can also do a post to slash topics, in which case you actually create a new topic. Again, this is a post request to the same collection URL that you saw before, which is the plural. And the post body is going to contain the details about the new topic. When you make a post request to slash topics with that post body, the API should ideally create a new topic by looking at that post body. And then finally, we're going to be doing a put request to slash topics slash ID, which is basically the same as this one, the individual ID. And it's going to update the topic. Again, you're going to do a, post, a put request with the put body containing the topic information. And then it's going to update whatever it is at that place. So you can have a slash topic slash spring. You make a put request to that with the post put body containing the new information that needs to be put into the spring topic. It's going to go and update. And then actually there's one more. We have the delete, which can be issued to slash topic slash ID, which is the individual element again, and it deletes that particular topic. If you make a HTTP request to slash topic slash spring, you should basically look at that in your API and remove that particular topic from the collection or from the database. So these are the APIs that we're going to be building in this course, again, from a hard-coded list. But this should give you an idea of how to build these Spring MVC controllers and methods so that you have a fully working REST API.